Hey there, welcome back. Today, I have an amazing, incredible, abundant fall harvest to share with you. Look at this basket I have. I wanted to try to tap on the basket a little bit, but this is so hefty and so heavy that it is taking all my balance to hold it here for you. But it is in this beautiful basket, which is usually my herb collection basket. I use this basket when I go out to collect herbs from my garden or to go out foraging for wild herbs and weeds, which I utilize. So everything I have in this basket is either from my yard or from our farm share, or I think maybe one thing from another local farm stand. And I am going to share them with you and we will make some cozy sounds with them. So let me put this down. Let's see if I can do that without too much of a ruckus. And I am just going to reach into my basket and pull something out. This first little item that we have is a little miniature butternut squash. These, I believe, are called honey nut squashes because they are extra sweet compared to a butternut. And they are really little and cute and adorable. And I love to cut these in half and roast them and then just sprinkle them with cinnamon and brown sugar and put butter on them and eat them like that. So delicious, so delicious, so delicious. And we got two of these in our farm share this week. We have just one more week left of our farm share. It is winding down, but these last few weeks of fall harvest are so glorious, so I wanted to share them with you, the little adorable honey nut squash. Originally I was going to have this just be fall harvest tapping because I wanted to tap on the squash and the pumpkin I have and a few other things. But there may be some other sounds in here as well, so this may end up being fall harvest trigger sounds in general. We'll see. Although it was the tapping that drew me here. Ah, I feel like I need to take a nice deep breath and kind of settle in here. I was a little bit, um, not nervous, but just a little bit extra attentive setting things up today because this is the first video I am recording here in my little studio space on my new phone. So on my new phone camera. So I don't know if the video quality looks any different to you or if the sound is any different, but I'm definitely kind of still getting used to this. It's a different kind of setup as far as what I'm looking into, since there are multiple cameras now and I'm focusing on you in the best way I can. I still have the camera turned, the phone turned, so that I'm not seeing myself because I like it better that way. So I'm just looking into the lens and looking into your eyes. And I hope it's nice. I did some test videos last night to try
try to make sure that I knew what I was doing and had it set up okay. But please do forgive me if there's anything, you know, kind of wonky this first time. It may take me some getting used to. So I want you to let me know which one of these harvest items makes our favorite sounds, okay? So keep a little list for me. Keep a little tally in your mind of which ones are your favorite. First, the tiny little honey nut squash. Okay, let's go next right into the big stuff, right into what we're all waiting for. And we'll do some pumpkin tapping. That really does make a lovely sound, I think. Let's see if I can, oh yeah, do the double-sided tapping here. At our farm share this week, we got a really big pumpkin as part of our share, which I didn't try to bring up here and tap on because it's quite big, but I am going to attempt to carve it, so that will be fun at some point. And then I picked up as extras two other little small pumpkins. So I have this one and then one more in there. And I wanted to have them for decor and possibly for baking. These are sugar pumpkins, so these are the kinds you can cook and eat. And I've never done that in all my years of cooking. I have never cooked a whole pumpkin. I've baked lots of other squash, but for some reason I never end up doing a pumpkin. I end up always just using them to look at and not to eat. So maybe this will be the year. And of course, I was the person at the farm stand holding up the pumpkins to my ear, tapping on them, choosing them not just by shape and appearance, but on what kind of a tapping sound they made. This is how you can spot an ASMR creator out in the wild. If you see them in a shop, Okay, so this is pumpkin number one. There will be another pumpkin coming in a little bit. I'll put this one down. Next, I think, I will go to some flowers. And these are a bit floppy, so I wanted to do them early on. I don't know how long they'll last. These are begonias, and see the petals are already falling. I'll do some petal fluttering for you. But these begonias are from my garden, from my porch. I've been growing them in a pot. And I just wanted you to see how beautifully vibrant and red they are. I have just been enjoying their color all season. Okay, that might not be the pleasantest sound of them plunking down on my 
<laughs> microphone table here, but I wanted you to see them. Maybe I'll hold them back here and we can just let them flutter down into my lap. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, and then I'll have to gather them up. Maybe I can do them down in front of you. They're going to fall off anyway at this point. And then I like to gather the petals anyway because they make a pretty little, a pretty little display. I'll let the pe flower petals, let the flower petals flutter down over you. <laughs> but they're just so beautiful, this beautiful red with this little yellow center. And this type of begonia, this um, plant had two different kinds of blooms on it. These double ruffly ones and then these little singular ones. These little just red ones with yellow centers, with yellow centers, with yellow centers. <laughs> okay, begonias, I'm not sure if you made the best trigger or not, but we'll let you flutter down. I wanted to do a little bit of crumpling with them, but I'm not sure <laughs> how relaxing that might be. But it is fun to let them fall, let them fall around us like fallen leaves. I didn't bring any leaves for this particular video, so we'll let the uh, flower petals do the fluttering instead. <laughs> okay, my little begonias, thank you for giving yourself to this video, and now I have all these beautiful... Well, maybe I can do the petals themselves. Apologize for any petals hitting the mic here, but... Ooh, that's kind of nice. Petal. Petal rustling. <laughs> okay, begonia petal rustling. We're nothing if not experimental here on Quiet Comfort ASMR. Let's move on to something a little more solid, shall we? Beautiful apple. Now I have to tell you that I think apple tapping is a really nice and quite underappreciated and underused trigger. And whenever I do apple tapping, I always get a couple of people who comment and say they like it too, so I think I'm not the only one. And I remember a video of GB's, I think it's one of her fastest ASMR little compilations, where she has one that is the Apple Store, and instead of having Apple iPhones, she is showing you all different sorts of apples. And I found that very tingly doing this kind of fast, two-handed apple tapping. I do like that. That's really nice. <laughs> okay, friends. I also just realized, it just occurred to me, that I have the gain still turned up all the way on my microphone from when I did, when I recorded a 200% sensitivity whispers video the other day. So, this is interesting, I've never done a regular video with things cranked up quite that high. I just noticed it because I felt like I could hear some background sounds outside that I don't normally hear when I'm recording. But I think I'm going to just go with it. This will be a little bit experimental and you can let me know how you think it sounds. Of course, I'm being a terrible scientist. I always do this. I change more than one variable at once. We've got the new phone, which I'm using a different cable with now for the mute Blue Yeti, so that might give it a different sound. 
and I've also got it cranked way up. But I don't really like to change the levels in the middle of a video. So, let's just keep going, shall we? I really do like... I really do like this. Apple tapping. Okay, a garbage truck actually just went by down the road. And it was extremely, extremely loud. So I did turn the game down just a tiny little bit there. Because I have a feeling that that wasn't going to get any better. Wasn't going to get any better. Okay, well, I knew this was going to be experimental. With the sound today. Apple, 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 apple. Okay, we'll keep on moving here. What next? This is one that it really surprised me when I tested it out. How much I liked the sound of this. This is a pepper. This is a poblano pepper from our farm share. And I just thought it had such a nice sound. Almost leathery. Pepper gripping. Is this a new trigger that I have just invented? Pepper tapping and gripping. Poor Pepper. I'm gonna have to make it for dinner now. It's gonna be a little bit worse for the wear after this. But it's such a beautiful color, isn't it? Of all the peppers, we get a lot of peppers this time of year, and they are many different colors. But I find this, these poblano ones to be such a deep, beautiful green, almost jewel-like. And I find them to be very beautiful. Pepper, 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 pepper. That's a good trigger word, I think. Pepper, 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 pepper. Peppity, 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 pepper. I like that one. I think that's in my top sounds for this video. I like the pepper. I do like the pepper. Okay, pretty pepper, pretty pepper. Next up, I have this array of absolutely fabulous carrots. Look at this carrot before I even start tapping on it. Just look at it. Look at that rooty goodness. It has like three horns plus this one little horn. And <laughs> let me see how it sounds. Oop, it's little tentacles, it's little roots might hit the microphone there. It's a pretty good sound. And this time of year, from the farm share at the end of the season, we get these gorgeous, 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 delicious carrots in many colors, again in kind of these jewel tones. And these purpley ones are just so cool, and I love the way the roots grow. It's like a little carrot person walking around. <laughs> so I wanted to show you the roots on this one. This one is a little bit, I think this one is from last week actually, so it's a little bit soft. I need to use this one pronto. But this one is from what we just picked up yesterday. And it might be a little bit crisper and a little bit more tappy. I mean, look at this. Look how beautiful it is. First of all, look at how big it is. And this beautiful root. So these carrots, when you cut into them, they are yellow on the inside with kind of an orange center and just a little bit of purple around the edges. They are quite, 
gorgeous and unexpected in their appearance. Carrot. Beautiful purple carrot. Beautiful purple carrot. And they are delicious. When you cook them, like a lot of vegetables, they they kind of end up all going back to orange, just like green beans of different colors all end up green when you cook them. But it's still really fun. <laughs> Actually, with carrots, not as much. They do retain a little bit more of their vibrancy. But I like this purple carrot. So we had the two purpley carrots with their little tentacles, tentacly roots. And then we also have this beautiful pale yellow carrot and an orange carrot. Let's tap on the yellow one first. It's a beautiful color and it's got a nice little... Ooh, that one has a nice sound. That one has an extra nice, extra nice little sound. Extra nice little sound there, I feel like. And then this one is so cute because of the way it's twisted together. I feel like it looks like a pair of legs, like someone with their legs crossed. I just think it's so, I just think it's so neat. Look at that little curve of the carrot, how the roots grow and they grow around each other. I just think that's really cool and really beautiful. I feel like there's a lot of artistry in the carrots this time of year. A little carrot brushing here. <laughs> and most of the time when I eat these carrots, I don't even bother to peel them. I do just brush them. I have an actual carrot brush, like a produce brush, you know, and get them as clean as I can and then just roast them because there's a lot of nutrients in the skins and the peels. And it's just easier that way. And I like to eat the little rooty tips too. I mean, some people might chop them off, but I feel like there's a lot of nutrition there. And there's a lot of energy in the part of the plant that was really burrowing down into the soil to get the nutrients. So I like to have my carrots from tip to tail. I mean, I don't eat the super hard part on the end, obviously, but I like to do, I like to do my carrots, I roast them, and I like to sort of roast them in their whole form. I just cut them into pieces, but keep all the pieces. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I'm waxing poetic about carrots and getting carrot, carry, oh my gosh, I'm not going to say I'm getting carroted away. I'm getting carroted away. I'm getting carried away with my love of carrots. But I like to roast them in some olive oil and maple syrup and some fall spices, some cinnamon and cloves and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, so delicious, so delicious. So that's my little, maybe I should show them all together. Ooh, my beautiful little, <laughs> if I can hold them, my beautiful little bouquet of carrots. They smell really good too. Smell very fresh and earthy. Lovely carrots. Okay, let's see. What else is in my basket of goodies? Okay, we'll go to another flower now. But this is a flower that I think is a little more a little more stable <laughs> than my begonias were. Here we have some hardy and beautiful marigolds. And I just love marigolds. I wanted to crinkle the marigolds for you because I thought they would make a nice sound, and indeed they do. And I just love marigolds because I love how they smell. I'm going to hold them up to you so you can take a breath and imagine the smell of the marigolds. And if you do not know what a marigold smells like, they are quite spicy, and they have this very distinctive smell. It's this spicy, earthy, almost reminds me a little bit of like turmeric or something. They definitely have just a very, to me, a very culinary 
smell, and you can cook with marigolds. They are edible. One summer years ago, I made some deep fried marigolds. That was wild. But I just love them, and you can see there are many different colors of them. There's this more reddish one, the more orange one, and the multicolored ones. And I love marigolds because I always buy just a small six pack of the little starts of them in the spring and plant them. And if you just plant one little marigold sprig, by the fall it will be this giant bushy flower. And so I like to plant them and then end up with this hedge of marigolds. I did do some filming outside the other day with my camera. I haven't edited it together yet, but it may well have been put together and uploaded before this. We'll see. Um, that shows my marigolds outside in a little fall garden tour, so... You can look for that, and if I have already posted it, I will link it in the description of this video. Little marigold. Marigold crinkling for you there. Maybe I'll just do one. natural crinkle. That's nice. We do crinkling sounds there often with like plasticky type things, but this is an all-natural organic crinkle for you. Yeah, see, they stayed pretty much intact. Marigolds are very hardy. And I love them for it. Here, I'll give you a little Years ago, when I first started my channel, I did a video of doing your makeup with flowers. I will link to that down below in case you would like to watch it. I thought it was a fun idea and concept. Beautiful marigolds. Okay, next up, let's see. Let's go for it. Let's go for pumpkin number two. Pumpkin number two. Now, if you remember, pumpkin number one was a little more squat with a little bit shorter of a stem. Now, this one is a tiny bit taller in stature and has this long stem, which totally charmed me. And that was one of the reasons I chose it, it was for it farming stem. So I'll do a little little pumpkin stem sounds there. And then ooh, that's really nice. Let's do one handed first. tapping and then we'll go in for the full <laughs> trying to figure out the best way to hold this for the full effect pumpkins just are so charming come in so many shapes and sizes and even colors. I've seen some beautiful white and green pumpkins at different farm stands this year. They really are a beautiful part of the fall harvest. Okay, so let's do a little pumpkin comparison, shall we? I will pick back up Pumpkin one, pumpkin one. Now listen closely. Pumpkin one, number one. Think about 
about that sound and what you think of it. And then we'll go to pumpkin too. Perhaps a bit deeper in its sound. Which one do you like better? Did you like number one? Or do you like number two? Let me know what you think. If you have a favorite pumpkin. Okay, next up I have two more things. Two more things. This is something... What is it? That also smells very nice. That's a little bit of a crumbly, crunchy sound for you. And this probably will crumble a bit. I actually need to crumble this um, so that I can put it away and save it. So if some of it crumbles, it'll just make it smell good when I vacuum up here later. But this is sage. These are sage leaves that I harvested from my sage plant that I have in my herb garden. And I harvested these earlier in the season, in the summer, and just tied them together. This one's tied together with a rubber band. I usually use string, but I must not have had any string that day. And I make them in little bundles, and I hang them around in my house um, from the ceiling. I have some nice beams um, in my kitchen that I can hang them from, and then let them dry out. And sometimes I make them into skinnier bundles that I tie up throughout the bundle and I use those as burning bundles for aromatherapy and cleansing of the air. And then I make some bundles like this that I just tie at one end that I can then crumble up into jars and have dried rubbed sage to use in my cooking throughout the winter. And so when I do that, I crunch these pretty hard and they crumble up pretty easily. But I thought I might be able to just crumble this in a gentle way for you. Crinkle it a little bit. And that's, oh, excuse me, that's a pretty nice sound. Oh my gosh, and it smells so good. I love the smell of sage. I love sage. It's very medicinal. It's very cleansing and very easy to grow. It's a perennial herb and once you plant a small plant of it, once you get a plant going, it will come back year after year after year and get bigger and bigger and be pretty prolific and there's lots you can do with it. So it's a great, if you're interested in trying out growing herbs, Sage is a good one to start with. This is just plain old garden sage. It's not white sage or anything like that. Some of those herbs are actually kind of endangered. So I like to just grow my own good old reliable garden sage. I'll let the crinkles speak for themselves here for a minute. I keep hitting the microphone. I'm trying to get too close here. Too close, too close. That's really lovely. And when I was gathering all these things earlier, Justin was the one who suggested. He said, oh, are you just doing tapping or are you doing other sounds? You should use the sage. So I brought the sage and I had the pumpkin and he was like, ooh, maybe you could brush the pumpkin with the sage. So this is Justin's contribution. to the video. Let me know if you like this sound. A little bit of sage brushing. That is nice. I like it. Okay, friends. One last item for you, which is not one of the more glamorous items of fall, but one that I love. And that is a 
cauliflower. Yes, a humble cauliflower. And I love to roast cauliflower, especially with curry spices and garam masala and that kind of thing. Make it spicy and good, crunchy, and it's delicious. And I was really curious as to what it might sound like. It's a little subtle. Not quite as happy as the hard-skinned pumpkin squash and the carrots, maybe. But I thought it would be fun to see what the cauliflower sounded like. And this one does have some little brown spots on it, but it's still fine. It's just the imperfections of organic produce, which I embrace. This is a pretty, pretty hefty one. And I was just curious what it would sound like. <laughs> okay, so I think that is everything I have to share with you in my fall harvest. So let's do what I like to do in videos, which is go backwards and do a little recap of everything that we heard and experimented with. So you can again kind of determine your favorite and if you want to tell me I would love to hear. First we have the humble but lovely cauliflower. Cauliflower. And then we have, I don't know if I'll go in exactly the right order, I already can't remember how I went back, but that's okay. The crinkly, crunchy, lovely sage. The taller, skinnier, more stemly, Emily, that's a good name for him. Him or her. They are a very nice little pumpkin. Stemly. And then, let's see, then we have the crinkly, crunchy marigold. Crinkly, crunchy, lovely. Crinkly, crunchily, crumply marigolds. Then we had, I don't remember, I'm going out of order here, but I think then we had the beautiful carrots. I will tap on this one. The beautiful, stately, colorful carrots. We had the Poblano pepper. Oh, I think this one might be my favorite. Maybe I need to do more pepper tapping. Pepper tapping, pepper tapping, pepper tapping, pepper tapping, pepper tapping. That is really nice. Pepper tapping. Then we had, ooh, the apple. That's a classic. Okay, I think the pepper and the apple might be my favorite if I'm making a top three here. Pepper and apple. Apple, apple, apple tapping, apple tapping, apple tapping. Then we had pumpkin number one. And it does have a nice sound. I think I'd have to put a pumpkin in my my top sounds, but I love the sage so much too. I don't know, I can't decide. Every vegetable, every item of produce, and every item of produce, and every ASMR drinker is my favorite. A beautiful pumpkin. 
And then we had the begonia uh, petals, which have gotten a little wild here, but we'll give them a little revisit. <laughs> a little bit of petal crinkling, petal crinkling, <laughs> for what it's worth. And then back to the beginning with our little gorgeous, sweet honey nut squash. Honey nut. Well, thank you for hanging out with me and sharing in the beautiful fall harvest. I hope you are enjoying the season and I am sending you many good wishes and much coziness. Wishing you much coziness and warm, lovely feelings this fall. So take good care of yourself. Rest well. And I will see you again soon. Happy autumn.